Hi everyone, this is SP Plays here. I'm making a quick video about how I overclocked my 1080, or my 2080, sorry. I, yeah, my 2080. Um, I'm using an EVGA Precision. I've currently got a 1300 plus memory and 90 plus GPU overclock on a uh, 2080 4.13 Ultra, which is already a very heavily overclocked graphics card. Um, it scores in the top 95th to 97th percentile and use a benchmark on air. Um, and uh, it runs really well. It runs really, really well. And I'm very thankful for it. Um, not sure why. Is that, there's little dots there. I was wondering if that's a pixelation thing or not. No, it's just part of the, the design. Uh, I wanna talk to you about how I overclocked this because it was slightly different to how I did it with my 1080, which was in the top 98th percentile as well on water. I have a since I, I I sincerely believe that this card would be able to um, this card would be able to get into the top hundredth percentile and use a benchmark if it was water cooled. It's just waiting on a uh, two slot bracket from the EVGA uh, eBay site. But anyways, um, the way that I overclocked this was was I started with the memory here. Um, that's what I started boosting. But first, you want to make sure that your voltage in EVGA Precision X one, and this is for any twenty eighty. Uh, make sure that your voltage, if you're using Precision X1 for any of your 2080 graphics cards, is set to full. Make sure your power target is set to full and your uh, GPU temper set to full. I, I've, I've never gotten above 58 degrees um, with this uh, card. It's got three massive fans in it. Um, and I push them sort of hard in the fan curve. Um, but yeah, basically you put these up to full the target up to full and you put the voltage up to full. You, you don't touch clock yet. You don't touch that stuff. Um, you'd, you'd maybe set the memory to like 500 plus and then what you'd do is you'd go into your um, Unigen uh, Super Position Benchmark and what I do is I go to Extreme um, and you know, because I game in 1080p a lot of the time I know 2080 plus a 1080p. I, I know it's just it's just 1080p is a good sort of way of getting your graphics card to work with your CPU in case there's a bottleneck or something like that. Um, you want to kind of have a bit of heat in your system to kind of push it through. I actually find that I have more stability in like 4K than I do at 1080p. So therefore, I'm going to push 1080p so that I can get equals equally good stability in both. Uh, you can you can do the 4K optimized if you want, but at 1080p extreme is still going to test it a bit. Um, and you basically just run the performance benchmark. It's 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 absolutely free. And you want to pay attention to the score you get. All right. So so the trick is you you run this once, and it should take about maybe a minute. And then you you record the score, and then you put the memory up by about 100 plus each time. And you keep running this benchmark over and over as you add it 100 each time. And then once you get to the point where it crashes or it stops mid benchmark, you go back to the, the number before it. So say for instance, I got up to 1400 before it crashed and then it crashed at 1400. I put it at 1300, runs flawlessly, no issues. So that's where you'd stop this test here. You'd run, uh, I, I ran Unigen um, Heaven benchmark uh, and this one I would say is more taxing than superposition. This one has some crazy frame drops that are very temperamental. And so you, it's, it's quite temperamental, especially with a lot of the cards I've used. So you want to make sure that this one doesn't have any frame drops below. Like you need to watch this test. This one you should only need to use to do once. Um, you shouldn't have any crashes in this if you've done what you needed to do with Unigen Superposition um, because you're only figuring out what your memory overclock is at the moment, not your GPU overclock. You're only testing your memory. So if you've done this process correctly here, you should be able to run a, a benchmark of this and it should be absolutely fine. Um, past that, what you can do is once you've got a score for that and a score for that, um, you can sort of see how your thermals are going. Um, and if your thermals are, are like below, I don't know, 
the 60 or 70 degree mark you you probably don't need to mess with the fans too much but what i would recommend is going into the fan speed here and setting yourself a custom fan curve um, i'm using uh 40 40 degrees at at 60 and 50 at 80 on each of the fans because of the fact that my graphics card doesn't get above 60. So therefore, if I keep it at 80 at 50, that's the sweet spot where I can maintain a reasonably good clock rate. And it also reduces some of the heat off of the, um, off of the memory chips. And I've got an ICX chip, so like I can see each of the different temperatures here. Um, you can tell how they've done the card in terms of the thermal pads. I can see here, for instance, that they have not got a good thermal pad on the on the, the second memory ones. Um, I do intend to water cool this card. So I would be water cooling each of these. And after I've water cooled it, I should still be able to have a look at each of these things. And there should be decreased temperatures. And I think part of why I was getting instability with my overclocks and part of why you might get instability is just because the memory chips are not being cooled as well by the fans as maybe the uh, the GPU chip is, which I think the, the fans are meant to cool the GPU mostly, not necessarily these. Um, that's why you have thermal pads for these parts here but they just again this is good this is good that one's still a bit hot for me just like that one there is a bit hot for me but anyways i'm um, getting back to the the um the overclocking stuff you, you see here we have memory at 1300 for me that was the point where i could get it up to and i had my fan curve like this um so you can kind of set it in, in precision x1 the way you want and i'd recommend putting it at 100 for like the the the, the tenth every 10 like the the, the 60 or the 50 or like you, for, for you you might not have a massive cooler on your air cooled um graphics card so you might get up to 70. if 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 you're like in 65 put the 100 percent at 70 put 60 to 80 um and put like 50 at 60 or something like, i don't know um, but just it's just about being smart about it. You you don't want to put the 100% fan curve at like 40 degrees because otherwise it'd be just going hard all the time. And um, that's just going to be obnoxious, especially if you don't have particularly good fans on your graphics card. Uh, so yeah, if you've got the fan curve sorted, you got your memory clock sorted, um, you can go into the third benchmark that I, I use here. Um, software oh hang on sorry software here we go you can go on a 3d mark and i i use the time spy um i use the time spy benchmarks like time spy extreme time spy 4k and stuff like that um and the reason i use those is because they're very effective um they're very effective um at checking how your cpu is going with your gpu and stuff and then and, and when you're gaming, you don't just want to have your GPU um, tested alone. You want to make sure that it can run a system with your CPU and that you want to check where the bottlenecking points are, for instance. If you've got like a CPU and a GPU that don't match very well, you want to know what its limits are. But anyways, if you can pass, um, if you can pass a memory overclock with uh you know superposition, Unigen, Heaven, and also the 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 uh, 3D Mark. Uh, time spy or even the fire strike tests you basically got your memory sorted um and that'll take about 40 minutes to 50 minutes to just overclock the memory depending on um how far you can push it maybe you can push your memory up higher than this um i would be surprised if you couldn't then again considering that my gpu is in like the 90s and it's percentile and has been up as high as 100 when i've had sort of overclocks are less stable this is this clock hasn't crashed yet i'm touching wood that it won't crash later today but i've been recording with this it's beautiful um you know you might be able to get up to 1500 it just i think part of it depends on like the quality of the chip silicon and also how well it's heated uh, cooled i mean anyways this clock stuff here is important um you you can do a thing where you you scan and test your clock speed. Um, I'd recommend doing everything else about about the clock first, so that if you are gonna use your scan function on Precision X1 for like your 2080 or 2080 Ti, um, 
I'd recommend you do that with your memory there so that it has like correct understanding. Like the software has a correct measure for everything else being in the right place. Um, this is why I'd, I'd said not to do the clock first because uh, the scan and test, they don't test your memory. They only give you a, a, an estimate for your clock speed. And the way this works as I understand it is you scan and then it'll give you an approximate score here like 90 and then you put 90 in here. Um, and it's very effective actually. Um, it initially said 60 and 90. I think it was 60 with this kind of memory overclock, so it was a bit conservative. But it also said 90 without the memory. So I think I think it's actually very effective as like a as as a function for overclocking. Um, you you would obviously be able to sort of overclock your own manually. You don't need to scan and test, but um, you can do this if you want, it'll take 15, 10, 15 minutes. And, and by the time you've scanned it, um, it'll basically um, give you a number, as I, I said, and it'll tell you whether it passes or fails, um, considering, depending on how you test it. Uh, and what you can do, actually, is if you do run scan, um, once it's scanned, it'll give you the number. I think you can just press apply, and it will just work. So it'll just set the settings and clock, and you'll be good to go. Uh, you can you can then raise the clocks by speed by 10 so you click in here and add 10 to it I'm not interested in that at all I'm pretty happy with keeping mine where it is but you could do that as well like I mean I might it said 60 with the memory like this and I went up to 90 before there were any crashes or anything like that in superposition or heaven um, but what I've found through going from the and I'll just I'll just go here I don't know how can I close this Hang on, so I open this again, it's fine. Um, and you wanna make sure you apply the settings, by the way, if you haven't already pressed apply, and then you can click on one of these profiles here and then click save, and it should save, and if you like clean your cache on your computer, you should be able to load a selected profile from here and it should work fine. Um, if you clock your memory with like the, the fan curve you want, and you've already set the voltage and the power and GPU temp up there, and if you get to a clock speed where you run these benchmarks, like superposition will crash. And then you, you if you've done everything else correctly, it, all the other programs should be fine. Um, that, that means you've got a pretty good clock. And I mean, obviously if your CPU isn't stable, if you've done some silly stuff with your CPU, you'd have crashes regardless of what you did with your um, GPU. But if you've got a stable GPU, you've run like Prime 95 or like um, real bench, um, now, I wouldn't actually recommend doing either of those for more than an hour because it's just it just cooks your system, man. And, you know, I spend like thousands of dollars on a PC and you just torture it for hours. I, I think an hour max for like Prime 95 and then like an hour for RealBench. And and don't do what I did with RealBench where like you do all the system RAM. You go for like 16 gigs. Like I have 32, I use 16 gigs of system RAM. Um, when I play video games, I'm not using more than 16 gigs of RAM anyway, so... There's, there's no issues. If I'm rendering, maybe I'll use 20, but like even then, I've done mem test going over 32 and it's fine. Uh, the, the final thing I'd say with this is, um, you wanna enable boost lock so that it just holds that clock when you're gaming. It doesn't try to do any silly stuff where like it lowers the voltage because you you don't want the the you don't want the, the the graphics card assuming what you want it to do. You you want it just to stay where it is and to not mess around. Um, I found much better stability when I have boost lock enabled um, with my 2080 graphics card. Before it would just, I think it was trying to downclock itself when there was nothing happening, but I just, I don't want it to turn itself off. I want it just to, just to stay at the speed, just like my CPU is, and behave itself. And uh, so far it's been pretty good. So um, that's basically how I overclocked my graphics card, TLDR, set the, the, the voltage, the power target, and power and GPU temp, and I did the fan curve here. Um, did the fan curve here and um, yeah, custom fan curve. And and then I, I tested it through the benchmarks, like real superposition, heaven, and then three mark. And, and then I went and did the clock here. And uh, I set the boost lock at 2115. And that's basically it. That's basically all there is. So hopefully that's that's helped you to 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 overclock your your graphics card. I don't think you can go wrong if you do it like that. Um, the only thing I change about my current graphics card is I would uh, do put some pads on the VRMs 
I'd make sure they were cooler because I don't like the fact that this gets about five to 10 degrees hotter than my GPU chip. Um, there's not much to gain from these 2080s in terms of water cooling. Um, of course, you can remove the fan noise, but then what you've got to remember is that if the CPU is in the same loop as your GPU, then you're probably going to end up with more heat in your, your loop. So your fans that control your um, radiators and stuff like that, they, they'll just be louder because there'll be more heat in them. I'm not directly proportionate to the noise of the fans. Maybe maybe it might even be less loud, but then also you've got to counter in the fact that your overclocked CPU uh, would then um, have to cope with the added heat from the GPU. So I wouldn't recommend overclocking the 2080s if you, if you, if you didn't need to, but if you wanted to, obviously that's fine. Um, but yeah, that's basically what I wanted to make a video about today. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully I haven't rambled. Thank you very much for listening. See you later and uh, bye-bye.